So this is going to be fairly straightforward, I assume. It's a 2101001 error code. Uh, in fact, we are stuck at 5 volts, 80 milliamps. So what about that side? 5 volts, 80 milliamps. Okay, well, I guess it's not a 0001 error code then. Um, stuck at 5 volts is all the M92, and given the fact that this was uh, 2101, reported as a 2101 error code, I'm going to say that it's 99% sure we're just going to be an M92 issue. So if we can turn it on, I cannot. So the battery has gone completely dead. Uh, so I'm assuming that this would have given me a 20, 2101 error code when the battery had charge in it, but now that the battery is dead, it's not able to because it can't charge because M92 is bad. It should be nice and straightforward. Nice, easy repair. I'll say that and then it won't be. This looks like it's never been worked on. Uh, generally though, if we get a M92 issue, I normally replace the um, charge port at the same time as part of the same job. You know, it doesn't cost the customer any extra because the ports don't cost that much. It's just good practice to actually replace the um, charge port at the same time because nine times out of 10, it's caused by a bad charge port. So when I get this board out, if I look at the um, charge port, chances are we're gonna have a damaged pin or two. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor. But hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at The Code of Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can. Which is why we're proud to talk to you about consolefix.shop. A great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not, hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that'll give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description, and if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console Fix, your friendly money-grabbing YouTuber. Let's have a nose at this, shall we? Let's inspect this charge port. Uh, actually, that's not in the worst condition. It's starting to stick out a little bit. Like some of those pins are starting to stick out a little bit, but not not terribly. So you can see we've got that one there, which is starting to stick out. And there's a couple over here as well, which are starting to stick out, but it's not terrible, but there is some damage to the bottom there, very slightly starting to come apart as well. So I will change that just for good measure anyway. Uh, I usually do anyway. I don't charge, like I said, I don't charge a customer any extra for changing the charge port at the same time. It's just part of the repair. I think it's a good idea to put a brand new charge port on when you're doing a M92 replacement. I'm going to pick your brain. I have a PS4 I've had it 10 years. Doesn't connect controller. Tried all wires, safe mode, nothing. So I replaced Wi Fi, I see. Um, yeah, it's very likely going to be the um, safe bridge, mate. If it doesn't work in safe mode, it might not be. There's two things it could be if it doesn't work in safe mode. It could be the uh, safe bridge, but it could also be the NOR. It could be NOR related as well. It's not necessarily um, indicative of a, charge, of, of a safe bridge issue. How's it going, Murad?
All right, so there's the old charge port off. And I don't need replacement solder on this. There's enough solder left on there to be able to just drop a new port on. Same with the flux. I don't need to add any more flux. I'll just keep it as clean as I possibly can. Press down on the board. Job done. Alright, so there's the charge port replaced. And that is sitting down nicely. Let's give it the old nudge test. Clean. Perfect. Awesome. Good shit. And the good thing is, because I didn't add any more solder and flux, there's nothing to clean up. Not really. Like, there's a couple of little spots. Like I, I can throw a bit of OPA there, but there's really nothing to clean up. Same as the back look. Perfect. Right, I am going to do one thing. You're coming off. And you're coming off. See ya. If you're wondering what these are, these are called diode packs. So it's basically two diodes. On uh, in a small package, small IC, a couple of diodes, and those diodes go to the data lines on Pi 3 USB. Well, they go from the USB port to these diode packs and then to some filters. But these, when these go short, they cause docking issues and they can cause random charging issues as well. So, on the HAC 10 boards. I remove these and I don't put them back. I don't replace them. It's one less power you point on the board. I always remove them. If you look on a HID board, for example, they got removed in later revisions. So you got one there. So that's one diode, goes up to there, through there to the filter, blah, blah, blah. And then that's another diode. So you got two in total, right? And then you got the grounds on either side. Um, on the later revisions, they removed them because they was causing no end of problems. So they're not actually needed. Same with that one. Look, two diodes, and then it goes to where uh, it goes from there onto wherever. Um, they removed them in later revisions because they um, they was causing no end of problems. So whenever I get a HAC ten board in, I just remove them and I don't put them back because it's one less thing that can fail on it. Is absolutely not needed. Do you find the diode packs only fail when the charge port is damaged? Um, to be honest, I haven't come across that many diode pack failures. Uh, but when I have, it is normally when you've got a damaged charge port. But it's just one less thing to fail. I'm just going to check these filters here because a lot of people forget about that filter. I'm going to check these filters here. It's usually the first one or the second one that fail on these. Okay, filters are all good. What about Poi 3? No short. So, chances are the short is going to be on this middle capacitor just here, at the top. 
So one probe on ground. Yeah, there we go. And on the third one as well, interesting, right? Okay. Cool. Right, let's swap out M92. Because we've got a short on that, that's what's causing the charging issues. Yeah, so that's what's causing the charging issues, the fact that we've got a short on that middle cap. And the, um, well, the charging issue is going to be caused by the third cap to the right. 2101 error code is going to be caused by the middle cap there. So that's what's causing, uh, that short is what's causing the 2101 code. And that one is what's causing it to not charge. So if that third one was fine, it would charge, but it would just give you a 2101 code. Okay, so that's removed. Grab a replacement M92. Press that down. Look how it's depressed and massive. <laughs> My brother in law was impressed in earlier, David, doing a house clearance. All right, there we go. Good enough. Right then, laddie. Where did my brush go? It's right there. You could have told me. All right, anyway. I have to clean out that port. Well, the outside of the port. There won't be any flux inside because I used a minimal amount. There we go. Clean out my charger as well because it's a little bit iffy. Right, board, uh, sorry, housing. Let's just make sure we get a, a charge and um, a display. So if, if it does still have an error code, we're not gonna see that until we get to the boot up. So it's gonna have to charge first, but we can at least see if it does charge 15 0.15 amps and there's the charging symbol she is charging let's make sure it's charging on the other side it is indeed good so i'm gonna leave that charging for a few minutes hopefully it doesn't take long to charge but it is pretty dead Yes, we have a backlight and that is pairing on. So no 2101 error code. I mean, obviously I didn't see the 2101 error code verified, but you know, the fact that it was stuck on five volts, that's all I need to see to know that we've got a issue most likely with M92. You know, you don't need to verify a 2101 error code. If it's not charging, it's not charging. Or if it's, um, you know, stuck on 5 volts or whatever. But that's working. That's pretty sweet. I will check and make sure it docks, considering I've changed the charge port. And the fact that I've changed M92 as well, to be honest. But mainly because I've changed the charge port, I've got to make sure that the charge port is actually functional. Okay, HDMI. Okay, I'm on. Give me a picture. No signal. Why? Let me just clean my... Ha oh, hang on. Yeah, I think it's my HDMI cable. There we go. Yeah, it's my HDMI. It's just my cable. Not a problem. Right, there we go. Job done.
it docks, everything seems to be working. Well, everything I've tested. Let's just test the game real quick. And uh, I do do have some joy comes to hand, so I can test that as well. Is Minecraft on here? No. Actually, let me just check. Is it Minecraft? Yeah. Let me just check. Uh, make sure Minecraft's not installed on here because if it's not, then I'll delete it once I'm done. I never leave software on that's not already on there. It's not. Okay. So this game's a little bit iffy, so it might take a little while to load. There we go. Yeah, the game itself is. It's a test game, it's getting old. So, options, data management, delete software, there you go. Okay, so it's picking up a game. It's charging, it's docking. Internet. Bink. Thank you. Audio. Yep, and finally, let's test the Joy Cons. Shut up, phone, you piece of shit. Whoops, my bad. Joy Cons connect, Joy Cons charge, Joy Cons work. Battery dead. All right, well. That battery's dead as well. I'll leave them charging. Uh, it picked up like the battery was dead though, so wireless controllers are working. Um, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, everything is working. I think video to YouTube full time is the best way to come and build your channel because you have huge potential. Thank you, Bugsy. Appreciate it, mate. The thing is though, if I'm going to do YouTube full time, I need to try and get the support. We've got some talking support. We've got some channel renewals coming in. I'll let them come through. Oh, no, it's not. It's not a renewal. Sorry. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate it, mate. Thank you for the support, buddy. Talking off. Um, yeah, I need to get the support. Like, probably mainly on Twitch because, like, Twitch... Like, Twitch is more... Kind of more lucrative for people to actually, um, you know, support me on Twitch because you can do it for free with Amazon Prime and stuff like that. So, if I can get the support, then maybe I can do it full-time. Other people seem to make it work, so... Yeah. But the problem is the ad revenue don't pay enough to be able to do it full time. All right. Anyway, job done. Now I'll drink my coffee. You two got your back in the long run. Mm, the ad revenue don't don't just don't cut it though. That's the problem. I don't know. I don't know. I'll see. But the ad revenue does definitely doesn't pay enough to be able to afford to do it full time. Not on its own. Not on its own. It don't. Or maybe I'll start doing more stuff for Patreon or something like that. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Or start actually consistently uploading stuff on Patreon and things like that. 